All right, so I'm going to introduce you to the most addicting thing you'll ever buy as an electroformer. This. This is a hull cell. And if you ever want to sleep again, don't buy one of these things. <laughs> they are quite fun, actually. So, um, yeah, they're very addicting. And what happens is you can test your electroforming solution and see what's wrong with things. Okay, what's wrong with the solution, what it needs, um, and you'll spiral out of control, hopefully, where you're like, well, I'm going to test this acid compared to this acid, and this copper sulfate versus that copper sulfate. It's awesome. Good times. So I'm going to show you this um, and how to use it. The other thing that I would like to mention is if you buy one of these things, there's two places to buy them. One in the United States, there's a, a distributor, there's quite a few, but they're all very expensive, okay? $117, okay, expensive for this little box that looks like it was made on a laser engraver. The other place is Alibaba Express. Okay, Alibaba Express, and they're $20. Now, if you pay the, I think, $12 rush delivery even, and get it within a month, it is a lot better than paying the $117. These are all standardized, okay? That was another thing. Like, just make sure you get the 267 milliliter one. Other than that, it's... Don't get any of the little doodads, like the anode and cathodes. Don't do that. You don't need any of the bubblers or any of that. Just this box, okay? You actually make your own anodes and you make your own cathodes, so you don't need any of that stuff. Sweet. Well, other than that, let's go play with it. Okay, so first let's talk about ammunition. You're gonna need a lot of it. This is your anode, okay? And the anode is made out of a piece of pipe. So what you do, you cut a piece of pipe, one inch piece of pipe, it has to be the one inch because it will pan out to be able to fit. I think if you used half inch, yeah, it would never fit, no matter how, where you cut it at. So one inch copper pipe. I would use M class. And M class allows you to have the thicker wall. That doesn't matter, but just in case you're interested. And I cannot for the life of me get that to focus in on it. Okay, see how thick the wall is? Yeah. So it's a thicker anode. So take a piece of copper pipe, heat it cherry red hot with a torch, then cut it and then flatten it out and use that as your anode okay why because that contains phosphorus after you get it all cut out make sure you pickle it okay and you can use vinegar and salt I think that's what they use but uh, for me I use sodium bisulfate that's my pickle and sodium bisulfate can be found in your local pool aisle I love that stuff it's a super pickle um, because pickle actually loses its power over time but sodium bisulfate this stuff has been sitting around since the dawn of time and it's still good and I just add water every once in a while. Okay, so, anode. So, what about your cathode? Well, cathode is a piece of steel, okay? Works really good. All right, now, this is the same steel they use for this. It's got a coating of zinc on it. And then what we do is we 
take muriatic acid and remove the zinc and it leaves a perfectly clean surface on the metal. So you can buy that in sheets and just cut it with a pair of tin snips. Good stuff. So once you have this box, you can refill it pretty easy. I mean like we're talking pennies on the dollar to run tests. Just need to cut a whole bunch of those out. And for every one anode, I think I ran about 20 tests at least, if not more. Cool. So after you get these cut and these cut, I'll show you the next part. Uh, in fact, I'll show you how to remove the zinc in the next step. Alright, so you take your piece of metal and you dip it in muriatic acid and distilled water. Okay? Muriatic acid and distilled water. 50 50. Just about. And I like that combination. It's, um, it's very strong and it's very fast. You can do that about. I noticed about 10 times and then after that it starts losing its power because it starts getting a buildup of zinc in the water so you're gonna have to uh, you know like remake this about every 10 times so what you do dip it in there and just let it set and you know you have it right if it starts bubbling okay you can see it start to bubble Now, you can speed the process along by adding more acid. Like, for instance, that doesn't feel too strong. I might want to add more acid to it. You can't go wrong with the formula. There we go. That's a little bit better. Sweet. So, we let that set for like 15 minutes. When it stops off-gassing, we know we have it. Then, what you do, you rinse your piece of metal with water very thoroughly with nitro gloves. Okay, you can't get any fingerprints on this metal. The metal should look like this. You wipe it off with a piece of paper towel and make sure that all deposits of this stuff is gone off the metal. This is zinc, okay? It's, it's kind of a dead zinc though. It's not really zinc at this point. It's like it's been eaten away from acid. It's the off metal from zinc that's been eaten from the muriatic acid. So make sure that you wipe the metal really good and then rinse it again if you see this on your paper towel. Again, don't touch the metal. Make sure you're just using tweezers. That, that works out really good too. Cool. If your metal looks like this, you're good to go. Alright, so the next thing you're going to need is these clips. Make sure they're plastic all the way through. Okay, this is plastic. Even that little thing that goes in between that holds the jaws are plastic. The only thing metal on this clip is this spring and it's painted and it's way up there. The reason why you want these is because you want to hold the plate into position. Okay. I would get two, one for this side, one for this side, but your alligator clips actually hold this one into position very well. Okay, so I would highly suggest a magnetic stir. Okay. Int Labs makes a really good one. This thing has been abused so bad that uh, and it's held up through everything I put it through. I've had a couple stirs, but so far the Saint Lab one, <laughs> the cheapest one, uh, has held up pretty good. So magnetic stir come with these pills. Make sure you get the smallest pill. This one's actually kind of large, but I'm going to run it anyway. Uh, you do not want the pill to hit 
the piece of metal at all. Okay, so. Now, I'm gonna show you a really cool way to get this liquid into here without messing up, without like tipping over your tank and all that good stuff. You get yourself a piece of vinyl tubing. Stick it down in there, just like that. You get yourself a turkey baster. Well, not really a turkey baster, it's like a, a meat injector, okay? A meat injector. Uh, they don't have needles, so syringe. Now, this vinyl tubing is just a little bit too small, so I would highly recommend a vinyl tubing that fits easily over this, not like mine. Okay. Well, do something like that and what you do is you now draw into the syringe and then deposit it in the hull cell. You'll end up rinsing this out and then when you are done When you fill it up to 267 milliliters, cap it off, pull it up in the air, let go, and it goes right back in your tank. Don't leave the vinyl tubing in your tank. Not, not a good idea. Sweet. There we go. That's how you deposit it into the hull cell without like disturbing the tank much. And now you can actually use this magnetic stirrer on that one hole saw. Okay, before you hook up your hole saw, you turn your current all the way up and your voltage all the way down on both coarse and fine. Make sure that you are in that milliamp range, so make sure your dot you are going to be in high amps, not milliamps. Okay, current all the way up, voltage all the way down. In this case, I'm using a three amp power supply. All right, so once you've inserted your piece of metal, you can hook up your whole cell. Positive. Negative. That's why I was talking about the, the actual alligator clip holds this one on this side, so you might only need one clip. You can start the agitation. This liquid has already been heated in this tank, so that's that's where I'm using for the already heat. They do make a version that has a heater in it if you want to get one. They are pretty expensive. I would try out this one first before you go investing that much money into it though. The hull cell is ran at 2 amps, so what you do is you do the course adjustment up to about 180, 188. Oop, right up there. And then you make fine adjustments all the way up to 2 amps. And if you get it like a 1.97, 196, it really is okay. You can see that it's, yeah, there we go. These meters aren't really 
all that accurate. So they do have a plus and minus difference. I would stick within the one, especially the doctor meter. I would I would stick within the 190 to 198 range if you could. Now set a stop watch for 10 minutes and at 10 minutes what you do is you unhook your negative and go rinse off your plate and then I'll show you how to read the, in, the uh, actual information from it. So along with this video you also get this nifty little tool the whole cell ruler. So you don't need to go buy one of those either. In fact, this one is four amps per inch. So I found one amps per foot and then converted all of them over to amps per inch. Very handy. You just have to print it on um, transparency, which is quite fun sometimes because you don't see transparency very often anymore. I had a heck of a time finding it. But, you'll need to print this out in order to use the whole cell. Alright, so here's the test results. Now, don't be, like in this area right here, this is actually, if you notice, when you put the plate in, it instantly plated, okay? You didn't even have to hook up the power because the copper was attracted to the steel and then just instantly struck the plate. So what I'm looking at is not over here because that is, I'm, I'm looking right here. So this is the throwing power of the solution. This had nothing to do with hooking up any kind of power to it in that area. And you can see that because, like on the back of this, okay, and even in this area where it didn't even touch, what happened was it bled up, and then this was up against the wall, and the solution just touching the plate will plate it. Okay, so when I lay the whole cell ruler over the top of this, You'll notice these fantastic things in your brain kick in. So here's two amps. That's where I ran the test at, right? And these are the amps I set at the amp meter. Remember, I set it at two amps, all right? Now, these right here are the amps per inch, so point if you see in this area, 0.1, and that's standard, right? We know electroforming, I always talk about electroforming, and we know it's 0.1 amps per inch. But is it? You know what I mean? Does it always have to be that? Well, this will tell you, based on this solution, where's the shiniest area to run. So it might be 0.13, it might be 0 0.30. If I want texture, look at, in this area, that's where I start getting texture. You can see the texture appear right here. So if I do want texture, I can just crank it up to, I know where now, 0.34. Amps per inch. So that's the fantastical thing about this wholesale ruler. Okay, it gets better too. It can tell you what you need in your solution. Now, in order to do that, you have to run a lot of wholesale tests. And trust me when I say I ran a lot of wholesale tests. Um, so every step of the way, let's say I ran a wholesale test based upon just putting in the copper sulfate and acid only, okay? I get this. 
and you can see the adhesion power isn't very good and the throwing power is worse so this is telling me I need more acid in the solution cool you can also see that I need brightener really bad cool. so this is just copper sulfate and acid this is with brightener only so I left the acid alone and I only added brightener and you can see now it leveled it out it did heat it the adhering to the plate became better and now I get a nice smooth texture it's there but it's smooth it's not very bright though When I add more acid to the mix, look what happens. Now it becomes shiny. So this is the third plate. Texture still in this area. And, oh, there's so much. Like, Here's one. This is before chloride. This is after chloride. So you can see if you add chloride to the mix, it pushes all the texture this way. It gets rid of your texture. The, this one's coated with a matte varnish so it doesn't, so I can keep it. And I also put a little number in the corner to indicate things like, well, uh, test, test runs. For example, I wanted to see what this plate looked like when you go to plate an object at 3 amps or 2 amps. And now I can start seeing those anomalies show up, those little doodads that we all love in electroforming. If I can get it to focus in on it. Yeah, those. We all know those, those little spike things, right? Yeah. Dendrites. Our best friend. And trust me when I say, you can really have fun with this because you can grow all kinds of crazy ones. <laughs> this is when you really know you don't have any chloride in your system. So the whole cell test allows you to test, add, test again, add, until you start getting, you know, shinier results. And that's where the addiction comes in. Amazing stuff, right? So if you have OCD, I don't, but I do like, I do like the game. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't purchase one of these. I'm going to also show you a little thing that I have to show you um, what you need to add based upon the results of the test like how to interpret the look of the test and say I need acid I need chloride I need this okay I'll show you that here all right so I tacked this up on my wall it's a very cool little how to interpret the whole cell and I, I find it to stand very true. So right now we, we do have a little bit of dullness and burning on the left hand side of that plate and that's the higher current area, okay? And the reason I say that is because 
over here in this rig, it's closest to the anode. So this is where all the high current is, this is where all the low current is. So if I wanted to improve this solution, I could pretty much just try out adding some copper sulfate to the mix. I would add just a little bit and then run another whole cell test and then add it all together and that's how much I would get per liter. In this case you could make the perfect formula if you really wanted to. But don't get that idea too much into your head because what happens is um, the battery acid you buy is always different. Um, it might be at different percentages. Uh, let's say you use a different type of acid like Roto which is like a 95% acid versus the acid battery acid, okay? Let's say you're using ZEP instead of the Amazon package of five pounds of copper sulfate. There's a difference there too, okay? Because some add more water to the mix. So you can spiral out of control there. But based upon what you can get in your area, you can now make the formula that you need for your electroforming so you can get like really good results that have, you know, like shiny plate every time. So that's gonna vary, but whatever you get in your area, at least you have that as a, a way of testing now. Before it was just like, well, the pH balance is this, so I need to add more acid. No, no, it's a different game altogether with this thing. You don't understand. It's awesome. Cool. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and if keep watching the videos, and I'll every once in a while I'll add some new ones and probably intermix testing into each one of them. Maybe I don't know. But other than that, I'm having fun, and I introduce fun to your workflow.